it. Okay. Um, thank you, Sister Roda, for, for recording. Good afternoon, uh, ladies. Um, thank you for joining um, this afternoon for midday prayer for our reading of uh, Step to Christ. Before we start, we are on chapter 12, uh, what to do with doubt. But before we start, let us pray and ask the presence of the Holy Spirit before we sing, uh, we raise our voices to the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, may your kingdom come. May your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. Father, thank you for the gift of life. And thank you for your love that once again you have seen it fit for my friends and I to come to sit at your feet and listen to you sharing your word with us. Forgive my sins, oh Father, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. And forgive the sins of my friends that are gathered here today and those that are still going to join. And wash us with the blood of the Lamb so that the Holy Spirit may come and dwell in us and be our teacher. For he is the only one who can teach us how to be the children of God. We are inviting him, Lord, right now to come and join us. But we know he's already with us because there is more than two of us. And you promise that where two or three are gathered in my name, they are in, in the midst of it. <clears throat> so what, this is your word. And it is not coincidence that we find ourselves this afternoon we're gathered here to listen to it. Let it speak to us, Lord. Speak to us and may your spirit help us to Humble ourselves before the word and allow it to become a part of us and to be the power that drives our very beings. And Lord, let it be the same for those that are going to listen to this message. Lord, thank you that the airwaves are waking up to now. Please continue to hold the airwaves and that we can hear and speak to each other clearly. And also for the recording, those that are going to listen to it, that they too may be able to hear you speaking to them clearly. This is my prayer in the precious name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Once again, um, good afternoon, sisters. Uh, it's time for midday prayer. We are reading Steps to Christ, um, What to Do with Doubt, Chapter 12. But before we do that, may we please raise our voices in praise to the one who enables us to do and to be who we are. Yeah, if you got a song, if you found a hymn for us, for us to, to sing here. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't really find anything, but uh, we can seek, take time to be holy. Uh, what number is that, please? I can't remember. Let me have a look. Take, okay. take time to be holy. 500. And which is God? It's, it has... It has four oh. verses, yeah. Mm. Well, I, I think I probably know how it goes, but I need to hear it once again before I join. So would you like to take okay. the first verse, Mr. Roger? Yeah, I'll take I'll take the first one. Uh and any of the other ladies you like to take the second verse. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay, Sister Rhoda, okay. uh, it looks like we, we are going to have to alternate uh, the verses between you and I. 
So oh, you, you can start this. And if I am in Discord, please, you have to forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I'm sorry. Bye. Oh, thank you, sis. Uh, uh, is it sister sometime? It's Barbara. <laughs> okay, Barbara. I see. Hi, Sister Barbara, how are you? Okay, so you, which one are you going to take? Three or two? Oh. Sorry? Uh, 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 any. <laughs> but I can't okay. do one because I want to learn. I, I, I know it, but sometimes I go astray, so. Okay, so can you take the second one and I'll take number three? And then maybe okay. Sister Rhoda, you can take again number four? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. We okay. can start. Mm. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing his blessing to see. <clears throat> Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend my time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy corner, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy, let him be thy guide. And run not, run not before he, whatever be tied, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord, and look into Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by his spirit to fountains of love. Thou soon shalt be fitted for service above. Amen. Amen. Amen to the beautiful singing. Thank you, ladies. You're muted, sisters, Tole. Oh, excuse me. I'm busy talking to myself. Excuse uh. me. <laughs> um, thank you, ladies, for the beautiful singing. And um, now let's go into our study. And before we start, uh, we continue. I'm just going to do a quick recap of what we, what we read last um, week. And... With the points that we took away and the points that we discussed that came out of out of the reading. So um, the first one is the, the sources of doubt are suggestions of skepticism, and then the next uh, the next source of doubt are those things which we cannot explain or understand. All about God, His existence character and the truthfulness of his word are established by testimony which appeals to our reason and this testimony is av abundantly available in the scriptures our faith is to hang on evidence and not on demonstration 
it is impossible for our limited minds to comprehend the character or works of the infinite, unlimited, and unlimitable one, no matter what our social standing, education, level of intelligence of a human being may be. So far, we can understand what drives him in his dealings with us. This is God. Him is God. Boundless love, mercy, united with his infinite power. He allows us to know what is good for us, to know as far as his purpose is, is concerned at any given time. The rest we have to trust him through faith. The word of God, which is his divine character, even though we cannot fully comprehend, we are not to, to use them as the reason for us to doubt him. He has provided enough evidence of his divine character in the scriptures. According to Peter, doubters often use difficulty, the difficulties of scripture against the word of God, which is the Bible. On the contrary, the grandeur and mystery of the themes in the Bible should, should inspire faith in it as the word of God. The Bible unfolds with a with a simplicity and, per, and perfect adaptation to the needs and longings of the human heart. This is why it is the living word indeed. Thus, the plan of salvation is laid open to us through this simplicity that every soul may see the steps he is to take in repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved in God's appointed way. And um, in, in addition, uh, what, I've, what I've picked up is I was meditating on, on, on what we have read is that God has never removed the possibility of doubt, which, is, which means that at all times, the choice that we make are, are completely ours. He, he is not a, 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 a totalitarian who <clears throat> tells us what to choose. And then we also discussed that it is not only young, those that are young on their Christian walk, and uh, it, all of us at some point in, on our walk with the Lord will, will find doubt in God, especially when prayers seem not answered. The evidence of God is everywhere in nature, in the Bible. Therefore, we are to live that by faith. Uh, the, we are to approach God with a childlike mind and forget what we think we know or what we have uh, as intelligence. Then we are on the safe side. Unnecessary questions for our salvation invite unbelief into our mind. We reflect unbelief sometimes in our prayers and we pray as if God is not there. If we are we fret and are fearful as we pray, yet we are more prepared to listen to human beings than we are to God. And then it was also said that we are powerful on our knees, but because we do not know it, this is why we, we end up with doubt when we pray. Prayer is always greater than even an armed soldier. And doubt in the word of God is the beginning of backsliding. For example, when we, we disregard, disregard the pain of inspiration, some even use the fact that the writer of, of, of uh, the E.G. White books is only a third grader. And they they go back to that they because they are more educated than she is. She can't tell them anything. And in the process, they lose the light that they would have had if only they read the books with an open heart. Thank you. I don't know is um if anyone else wants to add uh, onto what we read last 
uh, last week before we continue. Um, what also stood out for me is the just the last um, paragraph that we read last week. Um, <clears throat> it reads, to acknowledge that we cannot fully comprehend the great truths of the Bible is only to admit that the finite mind is adequate to grasp the infinite. That man with his limited human knowledge cannot understand the purposes of omniscience. That to me shows that no matter how much God shows us to, to, to believe in him, we do, we do doubt. And as you were saying, Sisters Tolle, that sometimes when you pray and then our prayers are not answered and then we start doubting God to say, did he even hear it? Did he, you know, and start asking a lot of questions. And yes, we have a lot of questions, but that doesn't mean we must doubt God. God is always there for us, no matter how, how we don't see it, even if we don't see it, um, anything in our lives to say, oh, God is there. God is always there. Just looking at ourselves, looking around nature, looking at everywhere, even the breath of life, even speaking, it is, uh, it is God that is there. I mean, um, just this week that we heard uh, one of our church members that used to worship with us had a stroke. And when I asked the wife and she says, it just happened, just they were going to bed that night and then all of a sudden he couldn't move. And uh, so we can see how limited we are mm -hmm. with, the, with the health that God has given us. So mm -hmm. this is when we, should, we shouldn't be doubting that God is not there. Although we are limited, God is still there for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Amen. It is true. He is everywhere, and yet we still doubt him. Thank you, Sister Rhoda, for that for that reiteration of I know you said this last um last week when we were discussing. And it is it is a valid point. Um that our faith is what our little faith is what stands in the way of our salvation. Um, is there anyone else that wants to comment on what we read last week? Uh, or before we carry on, I want to say something. Go ahead, my sister. This combination of uh, doubt and fear, it's godlessness. It's more than a Babylon, because Babylon mm -hmm. is godlessness. Mm -hmm. And you end up in a serious, even stroke, or you die. Mm -hmm. Because we limit God. We limit mm -hmm. God. That's why we have this fear and doubt. And there's a verse which says fear, prostitute, and all the others, they are in the same group. So mm. may God help me on that one. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, and, and thank you. Can I just add something? Even, even yeah. asking a lot of questions, because, I mean, the Bible has so much. And if we keep asking questions, asking questions, we're inviting the, the evil spirit to put doubt in us because we're mm. asking all these questions. Some questions are, are, are okay, but then not to go on and on. If we don't have an answer and nobody can tell us an answer, we leave it in God's hands. In time, mm. he will show us. But so many, so many times, some of us, we, we ask so many, we want to know everything. And they, we can't know everything. You know, only God knows everything. So we just leave it in your in his hand. Thank you. Amen. Absolutely, Sister Rhoda. That is a very important um, observation. That, um, is there any more comments before we continue? Okay. I'll read. Because they cannot fathom all its mysteries, the specific, the, no, sorry, I'll start again. Because they cannot fathom all its mysteries, the skeptic and the infidel reject God's word. And not all who profess to believe the Bible are free from danger on this point. 
The apostle says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Hebrews 3 verse 12. It is right to study closely the teachings of the Bible, to search into the deep things of God, so far as they are revealed in Scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10. While these secret things belong unto our to the Lord our God, those things which are revealed belong to us. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. But it is Satan's work to pervert the investigative powers of the mind. A certain pride mingled with con the consideration of the Bible so that men feel impatient and defeated if they cannot explain every portion of scripture to their satisfaction. It is too humiliating to them to acknowledge that they do not understand the inspired words. They are unwilling to wait patiently until God shall see fit to reveal the truth to them. They feel that their unaided human wisdom is sufficient to enable them to comprehend the scripture. In failing to do this, they virtually deny its authority. It is true that many theories and doctrines popularly supposed to be derived from the Bible have no foundation in his teaching, and indeed are contrary to the whole tenor of inspiration. These things have been a cause of doubt and perplexity to many minds. They are not, however, chargeable to God's word, but to man's perversion of it. If it were possible for created beings to attain a full understanding of God in his works, then having reached this point, there would be for them no further discovery of the truth, no growth in knowledge, no further development of mind or heart. God would no longer be supreme. And man, having reached the limit of knowledge and attainment, would cease to advance. Let us thank God that it is not so. God is, is infinite. In him are all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Colossians 2 verse 3. And to all eternity, and to all eternity, men may be ever searching, ever learning, yet never exhaust the treasures of his wisdom, his goodness, and his power. God intends that even in this life, the truth of his word shall be ever unfolding to his people. There is only one way in which this knowledge can be obtained. We can attain to understand of God's word only through the illumination of that spirit by which the word was given. The things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 11 and 10. And the Savior's promise to his followers was, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall receive of mine and shall show unto it unto you. And this is from John 16, verses 13 and 14. I think let us stop there and pick up the gems that are, that are in, in this passage. Uh, before I comment, uh, I, I bring my comments. Does anyone want to, to comment? You can just unmute your mic and, and, and start talking. Okay, I'll go first then. So uh, I find this a, a very deep uh, passage. The first thing that I see is, is, is the rebuke. Take heed, brethren, on the one, two, three, fourth line. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So unbelief 
he comes only from the devil. Uh, and it, it, it's being called in, in, in strong, in strong ways here. It's being given, it's being called what it is in very strong ways. And then the next one is is, is that we cannot, uh, we have to accept that God will, will reveal things in stages. I know there is the scripture which says that uh, uh, he reveals things as and when we need to, to know them. Some of the things he can't, he can't, um, he can't reveal to us because we are not ready to, to understand them, to have them. That's why he keeps them to himself. This is what I'm taking from the one which says, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us. And it also is, is about humility, isn't it? To accept that this is what God wants me to understand and, and take him at what it is that you understand through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then um, the next one, is the passage which I've, I've, I've underlined in red. There is a lot of they, there's a lot of I in, in this passage. They cannot explain, therefore they find it too humiliating to them and that they do not understand. And then they are unwilling, they are unwilling to, uh, to wait patiently. They feel that their unaided human wisdom is all about me, isn't it? But with the things of God, it's Christ who is supposed to be to be um, uplifted so that he can draw all men to to us and not us not us uh, uh, elevating ourselves and may God forgive us may God help us to to continue to seek the Holy Spirit to help us uh, to disable this ugly men who the eye who in us who always wants to elevate who wants to run the show and yet when he does run the show he, he runs us into the ground right into satan's domain and then um the next thing that i am learning is whatever whatever uh, truth or errors uh, uh, and uh this the uh, deceit that we come across it's not God who, who causes it. It is men's perversion. And we better watch out, uh, my sisters and brothers. The word says, let no man deceive you, especially in the times that we are in where earth is closing. In, 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 its history is being closed. And then the next one is towards the, the, the end of the passage, which says, if it were possible for create, which starts with, if it were possible for created beings to attain the full understanding of God in these words. So if we, we were to understand everything about God, surely that would make us God, wouldn't it? And then then that wouldn't work, would it? And and I like the the what that Mrs. White says, thank God that it is not so. Because then the spirit of Satan would also would even elevate itself in us more than what it already does. Because then we would say, okay, I know all about you, so why can't I also be in that chair that you are in? And thank you. Thank, thank, let us thank the Lord for in his infinite wisdom, he really knows what to reveal to us and what for us not to not to have. And then uh for the the uh, the, the, the one that says uh, and to all eternity, men may ever be searching and ever learning. And my, my, what I'm taking away from this is we are going to be, to be learning of God into eternity. You will never get to understand him. So surely if we are preparing for eternity right now. This is the time that we, we, we should also be, we should also be preparing to Understanding it is part of our preparation to understand what it is that he reveals through the scriptures, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and not through man, through any other man who our lean or not on our own understanding. And um I see that he is talking about the she is talking about that it is through the Holy Spirit, he is our teacher. 
on our own, there's nothing that we can do. We can't understand anything. We can't do anything to please God. It's always the Holy Spirit that we have to rely on. So this is what I take from, from this powerful passage. I don't know if any of you ladies want to, to add on or take away from what I found in here. Um, as as you were explaining and talking and reading, a question comes for me. For me, I ask myself, right? Even if I don't understand these things, does it really matter? As long as God is in control in my life, and I also ask myself, yes, if I know all these things, and then what am I going to do with it? Amen. Only God knows. This is why God gives us so much to understand and gives others uh, a lot to understand. It's, I mean, it's like the body as well. If the body says, oh, I'm not the feet, why am I not the feet? And the mm -hmm. arms say, well, why am I not the eye? Why am I not? We all got different parts and we're all limited to what we can do. I mean, without the legs, the body will be no use. Without the arms, you won't be able to take or eat or anything like that. So you need all that. But God hasn't given us all one eye. Then what would we do? How would we, you know? So these are the things that comes to my mind to say, why am I wanting to know all these things? God gives me enough for me, enough for me to grow in him, enough for him to trust in him. Mm -hmm. so that I'm not overwhelmed. He gives me just enough for myself and gives somebody else just enough for themselves. Because, I mean, look look at, uh, when we look at uh, uh, evil, how it came into the, into the world, Satan, he more or less like knew everything that God knew. Even now he knows a lot more than what we know. And what is he doing with it but bringing it evil? It's also like um, if somebody's got a lot of money, they start abusing that money. They start because they, it's too much for them. They, they don't know. They become restless. They don't know what to do with it. So to me, I think what God has given us is enough to, to know that he is there, that he is in control. That's the main thing. Whatever happens tomorrow, I, ca I can't change tomorrow. I can't change the past. It has been, so I need to trust God more and more to say, yes, Lord, you are in control. You've given me enough. And every day he gives us something new. And we say thank you to, to him because he, he is in control and God is, is all-knowing, his wisdom, everything. So I need to just learn to leave it in his hands. I shouldn't be worried about, I don't know this, I don't know that, and I shouldn't doubt because God has brought me from the past to now. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That is true that day, what you are saying, Sister Sister Rhoda. Uh, what are you going to do with whatever it is you think you don't have any need to have? If you're not going to be, you probably want to use it to self-destruct. Thank you. Um, for that comment that we just need to trust the Lord in everything. Any more comments before we continue to the next section of the reading? Okay. Um, does anyone want to read the next uh, one, two, three, four paragraphs? For us, starting from God desires man to exercise his reason power. If no one wants to read, okay, I can read. Thank you, Sister Rhoda. God desires man to exercise his reasoning powers and the study of the Bible will strengthen and elevate the mind as no other study can. Yet we are to beware of defying reason, which is subject to the weakness and 
infirmity of humanity. If we would not have the scriptures clouded to our understanding so that the plainest truths shall not be comprehended, we must have the simplicity and faith of a little child ready to learn and beseeching the aid of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. A sense of the, of the power and wisdom of God and of he, of, sorry, a sense of the power and wisdom of God and of our inability to comprehend his greatness should inspire us with humility. And we should open his word as we would enter his presence with holy awe. When we come to the Bible, reason must be reason must acknowledge an authority superior to itself, and her and heart and intellect must bow to the great I am. There are many things apparently difficult or obscure, which God will make plain and simple to those who thus seek an understanding of them. But without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we shall be continually liable to rest the scriptures or to misinterpret them. There is much reading of the Bible that is without profit and in many cases a positive injury. When the word of God is opened without reverence and without prayer, when the thoughts and affections are, are not fixed upon God or in harmony with his will, the mind is clouded with doubt, and in the very study of the Bible, skepticism strengthens. The enemy takes control of the thoughts, and he suggests interpretations that are not correct. Whenever men are not in word and deed seeking to be in harmony with God, then however learned they may be, they are liable to err in their understanding of scripture, and it is not safe to trust to their explanations. Those who look to the scriptures to find discrepancies have not spiritual insight. With distorted vision, they will see many causes for doubt and unbelief in things that are really plain and simple. Do you want me to carry on? Read two. Yes, please, Sister Roger. Disguise it as they may, the real cause of doubt and skepticism is, in most cases, is the love of sin. The teachings and restrictions of God's word are not welcome to the proud, sin-loving heart, and those who are unwilling to obey its requirements are ready to doubt its authority. In order to arrive at truth, we must have the sincere desire to know the truth and a willingness of heart to obey it. And all who come in this spirit to, to the study of the Bible will find abundant evidence that it is God's word and they may gain an understanding of its truths that will make them wise unto salvation. Christ has said, if any man willeth to do his will, he shall know of the teaching. This is, first, uh, this is taken from John 7, verse 17. Instead of questioning and civiling, cav caviling concerning that which you do not understand, give heed to the light that already shines upon you, and you will receive greater light. By the grace of Christ, perform every duty that has been made plain to your understanding, and you will be enabled to understand and perform those of which you are now in doubt. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Roger. Let's stop there and let's, let's see what James are reading in this passage. So I'll go first, if you don't mind. Um, the very first a paragraph that you read, the Bible will strengthen and elevate the mind. The study of the Bible will elevate and study, uh, will strengthen and elevate the mind as no other study can. So there is really nothing else that's going to make us uh, to awaken our minds 
And and then what we spoke about last week again, the simplicity and faith of a child is how we are to approach all things about the kingdom of heaven of God, ready to lay beseeching and aid and the aid of the Holy Spirit. I'm taking away from this passage the general uh, golden line is when we approach the things of, of God is for a broken spirit and a contrite heart, that humility and the openness of heart to accept what it is that God says, and we take it as this part is here where we just read that as a child does, and then we cannot we cannot be in the danger of then analyzing his word into paralysis and in the process ourselves out of salvation. We analyze ourselves away from salvation. And um, the other thing that I have taken in, from here is that. We, 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 it's, it's reverent because the word of God is his character. So it is, it, it is him. So the same reverence that we, we say when we go to church to in the presence of the Lord is the same reverence we should approach the, the word of God with and to pray and ask the Holy Spirit before we open the books. Otherwise, the enemy will come and you start whispering his lies and, and errors into our our heads and before we know it we are running behind him instead of behind our Lord and Maker and um, the other one that uh, oh the, the, and, and I like this one which says there is much reading of the Bible that is without profit and in many cases a positive injury um and the next one is that um, it's just the humility that we must come to the Lord with. That is what I'm taking away from this passage. So if there's anyone that wants to add, please unmute yourself and go right ahead. Um, this other sentence that says, um, in order to arrive at truth, we must have a sincere desire to know the truth and a willingness of heart mm. to obey it. Because sometimes mm. we, we, we just read, as it was also saying, we, we just read, we're not coming, and as you're saying, Sister Stolle, in humility, in reverence to God, we just come, you know, and want to know this and want to know that without really asking the Holy Spirit to show us, to guide us. So we need to be willing to know the truth and obey the truth because this knowledge is to for us to grow in Christ, to have Christ's character because the whole thing of reading the Bible and all, it's all about Christ from the beginning to the end. It's all about Christ and his character. So that is what we need to strive for, to have his character, not just to read for the sake of knowledge and head knowledge does us no good. If we're not going to practice as well, what we read, we need to practice what we are reading and also obey the Bible. You know, instead of us reading, saying one thing and then we're doing another thing. So that that won't even help us at all. Thank you. Amen. And we need to be willing to leave out what instructions that the word of God gives us about how to become a child of God. Thank you. Any more um, comments before we continue? Okay. Does anyone want to read the last, I think it's four paragraphs that are left. If there are no more comments. Okay. Let me read. Let me read. There I can is... read. Okay, go ahead, Sister Rhoda. Oh, I don't no, know if it's Sam... Sister Rhoda. It's Samson. Oh. Okay. <laughs> the... yeah. 
carry on. I think it's Sister Barbara. Carry on, Barbara. please. Yes, Sister Barbara. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um. Why do we, we start? That? There uh, is an evidence that okay. the only door. thing. Okay. The only yes. thing I think my phone sometimes switches off as we were reading some of the parts. I would not get them. It will be quiet and then picks up. So if it's doing that, let me know. Okay, we will. Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> I'll start. Mm -hmm. There is an evidence that is open to all, the most highly educated and the most illiterate, the evidence of experience. God invites us to prove for ourselves the reality of his word, the truth of his promises. He bids us Taste and see that the Lord is God, is good. Psalm 34, verse 8. Instead of depending upon the word of another, we are to taste for ourselves. He declares, Ask and ye shall receive. John 16, verse 24. His promises will be fulfilled. They have never failed. They never can fail. And as we draw closer near to Jesus and rejoice in the, full, in the fullness of his love, our doubts and darkness will disappear in the light of his presence. The Apostle Paul says that God had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1 verse 18. And everyone who has passed from death unto life is able to set to, re to his seal that God is true. John 3 verse 33. He can testify. I need help and I found it in Jesus, everyone, every want was supplied. The hunger of my soul was satisfied. And now the Bible is to me the, revel the revelation of Jesus Christ. Do you ask why I believe in Jesus? Because he is to me a divine savior. Why do I believe? the Bible, because I have found it to be the voice of God to my soul. We may have the witness in ourselves that the Bible is true. Okay, I think you've disappeared, Sister Barbara. You can't hear you of, of the... our blood and say, Savior Jesus Christ, Second Peter 3, verse 8. Okay, Sister Barbara, we are missing chunks of the reading. We've lost you again now. Hello. Okay, you are back now, but we lost a bit of, of the chunk um, from the top paragraph. We didn't oh, hear the we may apostle. have, yeah. Uh, we, we, we last heard you uh, when you said the voice of God to my soul, and then we, the next thing we heard was Peter 2 Peter 3.18, and then you went again. So can you start uh, again from we may have? No, I think let someone read because it it does that all along. That's why I can't say anything because I'm, I'm I find myself having lost picking up. So I think it's good someone to read. Okay, okay. sorry um, about that. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You did very well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sister uh, Barbara. I'll, 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 just, I'll just finish off. Okay, if that's, that's okay. Um, we may have the witness in ourselves that the Bible is true, that Christ is the Son of God. 
we know that we are not following cunningly devised fables. Peter exhorts his brethren to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When the people of God are growing in grace, they will be constantly obtaining a clearer understanding of his word. They will discern new light and beauty in its sacred truths. This has been true in the history of the church in all ages, and thus it will continue to the end. The path of the righteous is as the light of dawn that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. By faith, we may look to the hereafter and grasp the pledge of God for a growth of intellect, the human faculties uniting with the divine and every power of the soul being brought into direct contact with the source of light. We may rejoice that all which are which has perplexed us in the providences of God will then be made plain. Things hard to understand will then find an explanation. And where our finite minds discovered only confusion and broken purposes, we shall see the most perfect and beautiful harmony. Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. That is uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. Amen. 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 Thank you for the reading, Sister Rhoda and Sister Barbara. I see that we are on we are on one o'clock on your side. Uh, Sister Rhoda suggests that we we leave the comments for next week. And then whoever is taking over the next chapter can carry on after we've, we've done that, after we've, we've given the comment. All right, okay. We can we can stop there. We can go on to the prayers. We can just um, contemplate on, on the last few uh, paragraphs we read. And then, as mm -hmm. you're saying, Sisters Tolly, and then, and then you can continue co commenting next week, and then we'll start. Okay? Thank you. You can carry on. Thank you very much for the reading. And let us pray for the word. For the can word I pray reading. because I want to leave, sister? Sorry. Sure, sister. Can I close? <laughs> yes, sure. Go ahead. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. May thy will be done, O Lord this midday prayer bed. You promise us in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. Here we are, six of us. Lord, where we miss the point, where we do these things in a hurry, where we didn't take time to sit down and prepare the word. Ah, Lord, may you start to forgive me and all my sisters who are here. Because, oh, Lord, we need to listen, obey, and live disobey, we perish. May you remove doubt and fear in us so that we have a very good relationship with you in Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Everything will be added. Thank you, Lord, to hear this word, we have sound mind and we can decide because the word of God is life and death before us. The side of the devil, this wide one, and the side of Jesus, which is the narrow. May you help us not to harden our heart. If we hear the word, we practice it. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I praise you. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, you Sister Mugabe, for the prayer. <clears throat> and now, um, we can now go into the season of prayer. And I am cognizant that our time is running out. So when we do pray, let us make them straight and to the point. Because I know that some will be wanting to go back to work or to do whatever it is that needs to be done. Uh, we start with praise and thanksgiving. 
for in the scripture for praise and thanksgiving is Psalm 100. Mm, anyone? Do, I'll do that one. Thank you, Sister Rhoda. Um, the next one is uh, confession of sin and repentance. And the scripture for that one is uh, Isaiah 64, this is 6 to 9. Uh, who will take that one? Okay, let me take that one. Take that one there. And then the next one is the Holy Spirit, which is uh, from John 14, verses 15 to 17. Uh, who is going to take that one? The prayer for the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, so I'll take that one as well. And Sister Roger, would you like to take um, the prayer retreat ministry, UK, which yeah. is 1 okay. Peter 2, verse 19. Please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we're, gonna, we're going to pray uh, okay. for a few seconds and um, so that we... We ask for forgiveness uh, from God for our unbelief and not and not trusting Him. And then when I say Amen, then we can start. Let us. <clears throat> Amen. Oh, Father in heaven, we're so grateful once again for this opportunity that you gave us this afternoon, gathering together that we may hear your word read um, about doubt. Dear Lord, may we not doubt you because when we look around, we know you are in control. No matter what is happening in our lives, may we not have <clears throat> any doubts whether our prayers are answered or not, but Lord, you will answer in your time. As it says in um, Psalm 100, that we keep on uh, uh, singing and praising you no matter what. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generation. Lord, may we always have a song in our heart, no matter what is going on. Also want to pray for the prayer retreat ministry at this time. Thank you for keeping this group going, dear Lord. It is by your will and by your grace. And we pray also that uh, funds may come in and more speakers may come to, uh, to teach us the truth, to show us, to guide us, dear Lord, to have a closer walk with you. We pray for ministers that uh, have the truth in them and will, uh, will come and speak to your people because we realize that time is so short and we need to know the truth and we are not getting it in our individual churches, but this group, dear Lord, has led us so far and more people are coming to know you and to know the truth. So Lord, we want to give you the thanks, the praise and the glory for this prayer ministry that you have kept going until now. We continue, Lord, to be with us and you, that your Holy Spirit may walk with us and, and, and talk to us in all in all our ways. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sis. Um, and I <clears throat> continue prayer for confession of sin and read from Isaiah 64, verses 6 to 9. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we do 
when all we do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name that stareth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay and thou art the porter and we are all the work of thy hand. Be not wroth very so, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. And I also read John 14, verses 15 to 17, for prayer for the Holy Spirit after this one. And it reads, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth not him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, but he dwelleth with you and shall be in. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, may your kingdom come. Father, thank you for the gift of life and for the time that you have allowed my sisters and I to come and hear you speak to us and to rebuke us for our unbelief and wanting to be to be you by wanting to know and understand you completely. Father, this is us. We come as we are. We are not worthy to be in your presence. But we are, we, and therefore we ask, for we have done evil in your sight, in thought, in word, and in what we've done and in what we have failed to do, Lord. And we questioning your being, who you are, and what, why you do the things that we do, help our unbelief, my God, and increase our faith. We have, we have sinned as individuals. But also as a church, Lord, we are allowing the world to come into the church. And yet your word says, be a separate people. Be, be the, 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 the select and the ones that are going to bring the gospel and the loud cry to the world. Forgive us, Father, for where we are seeking to be, to be like the world because we are shy to be separate, to be seen as, as different from the world. Lord, only you can change our hearts. Continue to pour your spirit on us, Father, and allow and help us to work with him, to seek him and uh, allow us to, to seek the kingdom of heaven. As you, have, as you have commanded with all our hearts, all our, our souls and all our minds and strength, Thank you, Father, that your door is open and none need to perish. And thank you for the gift of choice that it is up to us what we do with the truth that we are learning on this platform and that you reveal to us when we study your word. Please put the desire to find the truth only in your word and in, from the Holy Spirit and not from man. Help us to die to self and to die to the things, to the desire for the things of this world, Lord. Help on our unbelief and help us to love the things that you love and hate the things <coughs> that give you grief. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, my Father, the one who is teaching us how to, how to be the children of God, who rebukes us of sin, and the one who is going to keep us on the path of righteousness and give us victory over sin from moment to moment. May we, through his power, may he help us to make the choices, only the choices that profit us for the kingdom of heaven. May he dwell in us as you have always desired to dwell in us. For he is the one, the Christ that lives in us. Through him, Christ lives in us and he is our hope of glory. Thank you, Father, for the truths that we have. We are learning on this platform. 
and you are holding the airwaves and making provision to make sure that none gets lost. And if we lose heaven, Father, it is all going to be on our hands. Thank you that you love us so much. Help us to love you back. And when we do what we do, let it be because we want to please you and not because it is a duty or a transactional thing because we expect anything from you. You've oh. already given us. Thank you, Father. As we are going to separate one from another, may we continue to meditate on your word and allow it to be the way that we live by and to change us from inside that others may know that you live and that they too may want to have you in them. This is my prayer in the precious name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. 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 Um, I don't know if there are any.